This is the new Aston Martin Valkyrie, and it's the closest thing you'll get to a Formula One car for the road. And I'm here at the Bahrain Formula One circuit to test drive it because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Though today I feel more like Fernando Alonso. Anyway, let's go, let's get in it. This is going to be epic. <coughs> oh, just got to get in it. <sighs> Maybe not so much Fernando Alonso. Buy, sell, car, wow. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the Aston Martin Valkyrie looks very, very luxurious and comfortable and extremely practical. It's because I'm actually in a DBX 707. So I'm gonna go out in this first to learn the track and also give me a reference point about what a high performance SUV can do out here. And then we'll jump into the crazy Valkyrie. So let's go. So we've got a four, litre twin turbo v8 which puts out 707 horsepower and 900 newton meters of torque so it's got less horsepower and less maximum torque than the valkyrie weighs 2.2 tons which is about a ton more than the valkyrie it's still going great guns out here though really impressed by it so come on where does this circuit go oh it goes over there whoa hold on the brakes matt hold on the brakes i've also got a fly in here with me which is slightly distracting come on wait 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 god oh, the power Go away, fly! I'm not qualified to do passenger rides. Oh wow, this thing is doing well. And this track is amazing. Well, I've learned it enough to go in the 2.5 million pound Valkyrie without crashing it. Oh, the jeopardy is real. Okay, that's one lap in the DBX. Let's step it up a notch. I'm here with Miles Nurnberger. Miles is the design director at Aston Martin. He's responsible for the look of this beautiful car. Well, I say you're responsible for it, but so too is Adrian Newey from Red Bull Formula One who designs all their winning race cars, right? Yeah. And there's two elements to the design of this. There's the aero element, then there's the look itself, which yeah. you're more involved in. Isn't that correct? It is, yeah. The real trick with this car was combining those two things together. So Adrian's aero concept and yeah, making sure it still looked, felt like an Aston Martin. And obviously we had to push the boundaries quite a lot on that because we normally make front engine cars and yeah. this is something very, very different. It is very different. So let's start off by talking through that aero. I'll do my best. Sorry, Adrian, for the uh, <laughs> explanation. The way they will look at a car in F1 is from front to back. So they're thinking about what the air does here and yeah. what do I need to do when I get to the back of the car. So, I mean, obviously starting on the front wing, you've got four elements to the front wing, top element is active, but actually all the body work is actually wing shaped and is actually generating downforce. So normally you've got a bonnet of a car. Yeah. It doesn't generate downforce or do anything. It hides the engine. Yeah but this one does. And that's why there's that massive hole oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't have that hole, uh -huh. the air stagnates. It can't do what it needs to do. So that hole basically lets the, the system breathe. And at first we were like, oh dear God, there's a, there's massive, a big hole there. There's a big hole there. But actually you soon realize, you know, how cool is it? You can see that F1 like yeah. suspension and yeah, you can amazing. see the wheel as well. So when you're in the car, in the cockpit, it is really unique, the view out of the car. And once the air's in there, what's happening? Obviously, the wheel's spinning, so it's going to disrupt yeah, so, the airflow. So it disrupts the airflow. So imagine it's almost like a, a massive motor, mm -hmm. and basically you get dirty air off. We don't want dirty air. We don't want dirty air. It's turbulent. So that fin on the side that you see there this. basically separates. All right, so the dirty air gets jettisoned at the side. Yep. The good and it's like smooth air yeah. goes more on the inside. Importantly, in there to feed the radiators and cool the car. So in there? Yeah. The other bit of air that's coming through there is actually going into the diffuser. Oh, under there, yeah. yeah. So I'm splitting it again. Yeah. Then you've got another vortex generator on the side. So what a vortex is spinning air, right? The best way to explain is the tube basically encourages the air to spin. And why do you want spinning air? There's two things. One is again, controlling rear tire weight, the dirty air off the rear tire. The other one is air either wants to roll under the car and disturb the diffuser or the other way round. And that'll depend on the particular speed or state of the airflow at a given time. So that basically helps seal the car and make sure the flow is always stable. And if you look at modern F1 aero, all the barge boards, that's what they're doing. They're creating basically invisible walls controlling the direction and flow regimes of the air around the car. So what's happening at the back? Just from a, like a visual perspective, this does look amazing. You wow. can crawl in if you want. But, uh. <laughs> you can literally, you can, you can actually crawl underneath yeah. the car. 
but lost a bit of weight, I'll get all the way under there. So diffusers obviously working very hard. There's vortices generated at the front of the car that travel all the, the whole length of the car, basically. Uh -huh. And there's little bits like elements on the side here. Yep. And again, controlling the rear tire and basically keeping that area clean and generating all the downforce. And you've got some flaps actually underneath there as well. Yep. Those are open and closed to do what? It can generate so much downforce, it would or could overpower its tires basically by generating. Ah, OK. So pressure, they're like a release pressure. valve. So they're release valves, basically. With downforce comes drag. And so to get the top speed, you can just bleed that off. You come to a corner, they close, you get the grip back. And that brings us on to this wing, because yeah. it can pop up and then go flat, can't it? Depending yeah, so on it's the like DRS in F1. Right. And that's basically in like, well, a <laughs> very short space of time. Yeah. All the aero explained. So that's Adrian Newey's job done. Get easy. <laughs> now let's talk about the difficult <laughs> bit, yeah. making a car look beautiful, which you have done here. Yeah, and it was how do you get the beautiful, elegant forms that you know from Aston Martin. So obviously these haunches are very, very important on the car. The four haunches, you know, almost like cat-like. Mm -hmm. Part of the way we described it is everything you see here in, this, in the car now, everything green is formed by nature. So it's almost like a beautiful pebble worked in the water and has that, that real elegance to it. And anything that's carbon that's black, that's sort of below the waterline, as we described it, is controlling nature. So that really gives you sort of this aero story formed by nature controlling nature that's design mumbo jumbo there, that. You go. <laughs> right. there you go it looks good yeah <laughs> Are there any things that were really tricky to do on this car? Everything was everything difficult. Was everything like, was oh difficult. So, you know, you can take the stoplight on the back of the car here. That little thing there. That little thing it's, there. It's just like a little bit of plastic. Yeah, so a normal one's like this and oh. like this, and the package of it is. And like, you need that. It, you for, must have that. For a road you car. must have that. You must have a high mounted stop lamp on a, on a road car. So, that is about six and a half millimetres across. We could have made it one and a half millimetres smaller, but you can't get the EU homologation stamp. But it is the world's. <laughs> smallest <laughs> stoplight and you know the same here that that tiny blip there what is, is that is to illuminate the uh, the, the, um, the rear number, number plate. plate and again there's a legal requirement uh -huh. you must illuminate the number plate this many lumens of light and that the again, smallest you could do it smallest and and of course lightest wing mirrors were very tricky um, basically to sit the occupant really down into the yeah. car and get these wheels where you wanted them, you couldn't actually place a wing mirror in a legal position to see behind you correctly. So you couldn't so, put it here? No, you okay. couldn't here because basically your forward vision would have been illegal. The only solution in the end was cameras. So we've got these cool little pods here in the side of the car and you've got two screens inside to show you what's going on. Another great one is the windscreen wiper and the windscreen so itself. So this big single windscreen wiper with the carbon fiber arm? Yeah, Adrian wanted a teardrop cabin because of course, very, very good for aero. So this is actually operates on two axes and actually rotates around the screen with the blade always sort of saying perpendicular. So it rocks like it that? It rocks like that and it's um, basically designed by people who did the one for the space shuttle. So you couldn't just go into Halford and go, well, I that one. No, no, no you have to call not, it the people who built the space shuttle. And, and it took us about a year to actually solve that problem of how to meet that legal requirement. And of course, the final one was the badge. Our badge is a six millimetres. It sticks quite proud, doesn't it? Really all nice. Six, all six millimetres. But of course, it sheds tiny vortexes off the edge of it. And because the front is actually acting as a wing, it's exactly what you don't want. We're quite particular sometimes. We hold a standard and you have to have a metal badge on the front of an Aston Martin. So you won't just paint it on like Mercedes no. did on their AMG No paint, one. no stickers. We won't allow it. The badge is made out of stainless steel. It's 40 microns thick. Is that it, less than a hair? When you hold it in your hand, it's like you, 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 can't, you can't feel it. It's like less than a feather in your hand. It was a 99.3% weight save. Uh -huh. And it's so thin, it actually goes under the lacquer of the paint. So they're kept in the fridge before they go on the car because they're so fragile and with the glue, they're kept in a fridge, and when you're ready to actually paint the car, they're brought out, placed on the car, and then the car's lacquered. This attention to detail yeah. really just sums up this car. Yeah. Also sums up how kind of like anal you guys must be at Aston Martin, that <laughs> all our cars have metal badges, and they will do regardless of it's just a DBX or yeah. a Formula One car for the road. Love it. Absolutely. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. But finally, I'm sat in the driver's seat of the Aston Martin Valkyrie, and I'm going to start its naturally aspirated 6.5 litre V12. Whew. Let's do it. Oh my God. Let's go for a drive. What is it? Uh, racing harnesses. Uh. 
It's got soft clothes. I'm going to do some laps, first of all, following behind the Formula One safety car driven by Darren Turner, who's Aston Martin's development driver. He's also won GT3 class at Le Mans three times. Oh my God, this is something else. It's loud in here and tight. Look, my head's hitting there. No customers have seats built for them, so they shouldn't have this problem. I'm basically sat on the floor. It's Sky, single clutch rivetized manual gearbox at seven speeds and it's pretty jolting a bit like a Lamborghini Aventador wow it's so responsive and that engine just wants to rev up oh, it turns it so quick I've almost forgotten the track this is such a mad sensory experience my whoa oh the vibrations coming through my bottom a strangely pleasing. This <laughs> engine just wants to wear. This is so beautiful. I've driven the Mercedes MG1. This feels more like a racing car. Oh. And it feels light and nimble and agile. It weighs under 1.3 tons. And you can feel that when you're chucking it around. But what's really amazing is the downforce. At 100 miles an hour, you've got half a ton. Maximum downforce is like 1.1 tons. That's 160 miles an hour. It just stays. Can't really let it out with it in So this is a perfect example of how the machine can make you better than the man. I could drive this fast around here, but Darren can drive that safety car. And believe me, Darren is infinitely better at driving than me. But that just goes to show you how capable this car is. Oh, that's the ERS button then. And you feel the extra punch from the motor. Straighten up a bit. Let's go for it. Now let's talk about the engine and the chassis and I'm here with James Manners who was in charge of it for this car. So James, tell me about this V12. We've got a six and a half litre V12 quad cam 48 valve naturally aspirated engine. Overall we've got 1155 PS, 1001 horsepower from the engine on its own because we wanted to say we've got more than 1000 horsepower. The engine itself generates 780 Newton meters at 7000 RPM. What does it rev to? It revs all the way to 11,100 RPM. So peak power is at 10,600 RPM. So it's a P2 hybrid. So that means you've got engine with a twin plate clutch straight off of Formula One cut technology. And that goes to your e-motor, which is on your input shaft to the gearbox. We also do ERS boost we do torque infill because again we just want that throttle response that you know, smooths out the curves from the ice delivered torque. Uh, we also do first gear pull away so because we've got that plate clutch to take all the horsepower and the torque of the engine you've seen in, in other hypercars they can be quite lurchy at low speed. Yeah, whereas this just, just smooth isn't it? Exactly. I don't know what noise that was. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Again, I think I need to get my teeth fixed so <laughs> whistle between them. Anyway so you're driving away in electric power alone, alone. from the motor which has how much horsepower and how much torque? So 280 newton meters of torque, Yep. 160 horsepower. So when you're first driving this car, you're 2.5 million pound Aston Martin Valkyrie, you've got 160 horsepower. That's it, yeah. But not for very long. <laughs> no, not for very long. Well, with the 280 newton meters, we spec the e-motor to be that size because any bigger and you just spin the wheels with the e-motor alone. So how much torque in total? 924 newton meters at 7,000 RPM. I love the carbon fiber on there, but this, this is the air intake, isn't it? It is indeed. So and something special <clears throat> about this. We've got over 400 3D printed components in this car. You know, first for Aston Martin to use a 3D printed part on its own, let alone multiple hundreds of times and including sort of customer facing bits. Some of the vents on the inside are 3D printed. So this element here, yeah, this is element 3D here printed. is 3D printed. And what is this though? I'm sorry to interrupt That's you. Right. This is weird. It's like Exactly, so that Elastic is a it. yeah, it's a hydrophobic film because you've got the air scoop on the roof when you're driving in the rain, we don't want the air here. ingesting the water. So 
the hydrophobic film stops the water coming through, which then runs down here and then runs down that drain tube in the middle. Even with that film, it can still ingest enough air to power a six and a half litre V12 at 11,100 RPM. That's incredible. So what is the top speed of this car? So it's electronically limited to 355 kph. Which is in old money? 220 miles an hour. And how about the convertible, the Spider? Exactly the same. Even with the roof off? Even with the roof off, exactly Oh, wow, same. okay. So we, yeah, we're not power limited, so even with the roof off, we are still so it could go faster. <laughs> it could. <laughs> oh, right, I, I get it. Okay. How many coupes will be built? 150. And how many spiders? 85. And they're all gone. And they're all just gone. asking for a friend, obviously. Ex exactly. Obviously, you've got all this power. You're going to need some good brakes. So let's move on to the brakes. So carbon ceramic brakes, CCM brakes. We didn't go full carbon because it's a road car. We still wanted you to be able to stop at a set of traffic lights. So we wanted that low speed braking capability. You've got 420 mil discs at the front with a six pot caliper. At the rear, we've got 385 millimeter discs with six pot calipers. And the tires, these just look like, when I say normal, they're huge. <laughs> they're Michelin Pilots World Cup 2s. Exactly, so you've got 20 inches on the front, 21 inches on the back, but again, we wanted an off the shelf tire because ultimately this is a You are going to get through some tires because I know if you have a Bugatti Chiron they have bespoke tires and if you get a puncture or you need to replace the tires it's very expensive and can be a bit of a pain whereas this yep. less so exactly so you get a bunch of them do your track day when I say a track day whoever buys this car rents the track for themselves yep or has their own private track. Yeah. Or has their own private track, <laughs> and then they don't need to worry about tyres. How about the suspension? Because I can see bits of it here. What kind of suspension setup you got in this car? Exactly. It's not normal, is it? Not normal in, in any way, shape, or form. So we've got double wishbone suspension. If you ever look at the back, you'll see that the drive shaft actually goes through the middle of the lower wishbone. He's very pleased about that. <laughs> so it's obviously a feat of engineering. So how does it all work? It's a little bit of LMP1 technology, in it, and we use torsion bar suspension. So basically, a torsion bar, rather than a coil spring which you can press, you, you twist, twist it. Yep, okay. So there's metal bars in there which get twisted by this element pushing on it. Yep, okay. But it's a bit more complicated than that with various elements. Yeah, exactly, there. exactly. So push rod acts on what we call the passive rocker. So the passive rocker is what's connected to your damper, which is an active damper, just yep, to okay. make it confusing. The load then transfers through the torsion bar to what we call the active rocker. And on the active rocker is where we have the hydraulic actuator that is doing your anti-pitch, anti-squat, anti-dive, anti-heave and full platform control. Okay, so what that means is the car just stays dead level when you go through a corner. But isn't there something you've done to make it actually lean, even though it could stay dead flat? We could run the car completely flat through the corners, uh -huh. but then that feels quite unnatural. Normal yeah, drivers exactly. are used to cars pitching, rolling a bit, and you just wouldn't know what was going on so much with it. No, exactly. So what we do is we actually put in what we call virtual stiffness. So the amount of virtual stiffness <laughs> changes between urban and sport and track. Uh -huh. So we actually induce roll but with the hydraulic system to make the car feel more natural. And they say, as you then progress to sport and then track, you get less and less and less body movement and a different ride height. This car was first announced, when was it? 2016? Yes. And with 2023, some have been delivered to customers. Yes. That's quite a long time, isn't it? But it's just so, you must have loved doing this as an engineer. It's, I mean, it must exactly. have been an absolute, it's, you know, it's, dream yeah, come true. Yeah, it's a complete, you know, especially for, for the career, it is just such an, a fantastic opportunity to just be able to go absolutely mad with an amazing piece of engineering history. And to that end, there's something to do with titanium. You use quite a bit of titanium on this car. Isn't there a story relating to that? At one point, we were using so much titanium that we actually put the price of titanium up globally. The MOD also called us because they said well last time someone was buying this much titanium was when they were making the SR17 bomber. So they thought you might be making a stealth bomber. Yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this interior I mean it's pretty stealthy all this black all the common fibre these seats I mean they're barely seats. Exactly the seats weigh all of eight kilograms an S-class seat could easily be 90 kilos. What? But the even more mad thing is when you compare it to the front wheels. So the front wheels, magnesium alloy, eight and a half kilos. So the seats weigh less than the wheels, which weigh less than the tires. So the chassis is obviously carbon fiber monocoque. Can you see parts of it exposed here? And this is all structural, yeah? It's all structural through this center console, squeezed into that tiny space. Hydraulic lines, you've got high voltage lines, you've got your main cabin harness, you've got your AC lines and your brake lines. And you've got lines. USB. Where's the cup holders? Well, you have staff to hold your <laughs> yeah, cup. Exactly. They're, they're, yeah. To hold your cup. They're in the cabin. In the, yeah. in the you don't want them when you're hooting around a track, let's no, be honest. No, exactly. And the steering wheel, obviously removable. And yeah, removable the, to help the magnetic thing out. on them. Oh, I love that. Yes, yeah, a lovely oh, click, isn't it? That's a nice click. It's lovely. All of the controls are on the steering wheel itself. So you've got everything from your indicators, your gear paddles, 
your EOS boost button, you change your ESP and your handling modes, a launch control, wiper controls, headlight controls are all done through there. And then first touch screen for an Aston Martin, so all of your cabin control is done through the infotainment in the middle. Your main headlight switch is uh, done in the middle as well, as well as you do have internet radio and sat nav. Do you have air conditioning? We do have air conditioning. That is good, because that, obviously that adds weight. Are there any issues regarding noise regulations though? Because of the year we had to release this, on paper is the quietest Aston Martin on the outside. What? Believe it or not. How? Again, it's utilising the electric motor. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so it's measured when you're driving along with the electric motor. Oh, I love that. That, for me, is the best problem solving <laughs> that you have done on this car. Thank you very much for that. No worries at all. <laughs>
Yeah, it's got the pole rotating and moving around. Darren, I've been out in the car and driven it and we've got my telemetry data, you've been out driven it, we've got your data, so tell me how much quicker was I around the track than you? A load, like a fantastic amount, no actually it was the other way around but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> You're going out in the car for the first time, first time here at the Bahrain circuit, that's a lot to take on. So I was thinking maybe 12, 15 seconds, and it's actually only eight seconds. Eight seconds, which is good around the Norch life, if I'm that close to you. It's good even here, like, okay. you know. <laughs> right. it, and then you look through the data and it's like, braking, you actually pulled more G than I did under braking, so you hit the pedal harder. It's just you did it earlier and then you bleed out, and mine was all a right. bit more sort of towards the end of the straight. Cornering, I'd say your minimum speed through some of the corners, maybe 10 to 12 kilometers an hour slower. Because I'm braking too soon. And yeah. then just not carrying the speed. But that all comes from knowing the car, knowing what grip you've got, where the balance of the car is and it's just more and more laps so I think eight seconds is a fairly good first shot at it. I don't think there's any reflection on me it's more the car it was actually quite easy and the visibility was a lot better than I thought it would be so I could see all the reference points quite well I reckon if you let me go in some more I could probably get a few eight seconds, seconds at it. eight <laughs> seconds <laughs> no, no, no chance no chance I thought it'd be interesting though how much quicker it is if you go out in the racing car so let's try that all right, Darren, so we've jumped into the AMR Pro now, haven't we? Yes, so it's a completely different driving experience now. We're on slick tyres, still got 1,000 horsepower, but fixed aero and no active suspension, so it's a different ride altogether. You ready to do a couple of laps? Before we do, though, has it got a different chassis to the normal Valkyrie? Yeah, so the carryover from the Rogo and Valkyrie is effectively the engine, and the headlights. And you don't have the electric motor then? There's an electric motor in a different way. We pull away on an e-motor, and then as we go down the pit lane, we bump start the engine, and then we go on just the engine from that moment onwards. So effectively, the electric motor on this car is only for low speed maneuverability. So there's no ERS button for me to press a lot? There's definitely no button. I'd be faster you. in this. I, I wouldn't <laughs> break it. <laughs> It'd be fine. Yeah, be, <laughs> there's no battery to discharge really quickly. Okay, let's do it. Let's see if all I can right. hold on to all this kit. You might not get any audio. Right. We'll find out. Just get it straight. Bump start. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the normal Valkyrie was loud, but this thing is just deafening. Oh yeah, cold tyres.
How was it? I need to go to the toilet really <laughs> urgently, like really quickly. Let's get me out of this. That one right hander, the fast one. Yeah. I can feel my lungs stretching. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to the toilet as quick as we can. It it's an emergency. That. I'll hold it. <laughs> I hope I can get this race suit down quick enough. Ah, ah. There you go, bud. Will I make it in time? <laughs> Added jeopardy. Yeah. Maybe it was the chicken last night. <laughs> bye bye. Okay, Darren, you've been out in the racing car now. It was pretty traumatic for me. I've been to the toilets, so everything's okay. I want to know how much quicker you are in the racing car compared to the road car around the track. It's always a, a significant amount just because of the slick tyre. That's where the big, big difference is between the two cars. So is it more or less than eight seconds, the difference between me and you in oh, the same car? Right, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, it'd be about that sort of range. Really? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if I had the racing car, I'd be as fast as you in this. Good, good. Head to head. <laughs> I, I think I'd probably be slower in the racing car. Anyway, thank you very much for taking me out in it. Absolutely amazing. This car, oh my God, it's blown my mind. It's just so exhilarating, so intense, yet also quite easy to drive. I didn't think it would be. Yeah, I would definitely add this to my collection. It's in my dream garage, let's just say that. <laughs>